You know, Klaus, there's been so much confusion and fighting and misinformation that the public has no idea what to eat anymore. And at least in the last decade, the most dangerous figure in that confusion has been Nina Teichels and her book, The Big Fat Surprise. It is no surprise to us that knew the science, that it's wrong and now confirmed by the best database there is. Her book has harmed people and we need to call her out for it. Dr. Joel Kahn, thank you so much for doing this. Um, what is the big breaking news this week? Yeah, Klaus, the breaking news is a decade of fighting, a decade of debating, a decade of appearing on Joe Rogan for four hours and talking about saturated fat, saturated fat, saturated fat. Everybody's confused. The big breaking news is that's over. The most respected, the most esteemed research group in the world, the Cochrane Database, has concluded what we knew long ago. Excess saturated fat in the diet will increase your risk of dying of the number one cause in the United States, in Britain, in the Western world, heart attacks, strokes, aneurysms. We don't need to die of those deaths. Mm -hmm. And can you just talk a little bit more about the, the study? What does it show? How many um, scientific papers did it review? And uh, yeah, we could just talk about some of the specifics. That'd be really great. Well, this new super review by the Cochrane database was so respected worldwide for their ability to pick only the highest quality research projects and incorporate them in their analysis. You know, they looked at 16 of the best studies, 59,000 people, very detailed uh, information about their diet. Some had high saturated fat diets by design of the study. Some had low saturated fat diets, more meat, more butter, more cheese, less meat, less butter, less cheese. At the end of the day, they found that within two years, we can enjoy a 21% reduction in our risk of heart attack, stroke, a congestive heart failure, dying of heart disease. And if we do more than the average, if we change our diet more than just average, so there's essentially no meat butter, cheese, uh, turkey, and pork, we'll see even bigger results. So uh, they threw out the weak studies, they threw out the tainted studies, they threw out the studies that were conflicted by funding from industry because the dairy industry has done a very big job of funding a lot of these studies that led to confusion. They only incorporated the highest quality study and that's what we need, trusted comments, trusted science, uh, and the conclusion is clear, we're done. You know, the big fat war is over. And how do you think this new data will change the, the current guidelines, whereas the dietary guidelines and the information put out by the powers that be about nutrition and health? Well, in the United States, we're just coming up to the next cycle of the USDA um, guidelines on food. And that's a very long process with initially a committee making recommendations, and then the full panel approving. There's already been a movement before this new major study came out to propose to the USDA that foods like bacon, salami, pepperoni be labeled as cancer-causing foods based on the analysis that's gone on since at least 2015 and really has not been questioned or second-guessed. It's the real data that bacon can lead to a risk of colorectal cancer and other foods don't, it's the processed meats. But now we have ammunition to go to the USDA um, and ask them, can we incorporate their already recommendations that you limit saturated fat in the diet? Uh, they have a comment in the current guidelines in the United States, as little cholesterol as possible, and I believe it's less than 7% of the calories in the diet should be from saturated fat. Now with this new big Cochrane database study, we need to go back when there's hearings and an opportunity for uh, appearances at Congress to call for even tighter recommended reductions because that does translate to school meals um, and institutional meals and dollars that are spent in this country and more beans will be bought and less beef and more water will be bought and less full fat dairy. And uh, you know, there'll be more salads and less cheese because that's how the dollars are spent based on these guidelines. So we need to get politically active and demonstrate that this confusion that you've seen in front of the USDA and Congress in the United States is uh, all been a charade and the science is very clear and strong.
Mm. And before we talk about the sources of misinformation and uh, maybe disinformation, um, can you just talk a little bit about the background and the story of saturated fat? You seem to be a, a bit of an expert on this topic. Yes. Um, you know, when there began to be a real rise in the rate of heart attacks in the 1940s, after World War II, people came back smokers, people came back eating rich meals. We soon had drive-ins and fast food restaurants. Number of heart attacks started to skyrocket. And our government in the United States started funding projects like uh, the Framingham study and the Minnesota epidemiology study. Soon it became apparent diet and heart were related. That was a whole new hypothesis in the early 1950s. And it focused more and more on a war between was it saturated fat? That's again, butter, cheese, meat. Was it sugar? And the overwhelming data actually was excess of either are not good for you, but it was a saturated fat that directly led to your cholesterol going up that could directly lead to arterial blockage, heart attack, stroke, aneurysm, loss of a leg, erectile dysfunction, and such. And you know, it went to the point that there were what are called metabolic ward studies. Let's take people and put them in a scientific study for eight weeks where they eat only the food you give them at the National Institutes of Health. There's a very famous equation, more saturated fat in the diet, the higher your cholesterol will be. It's very predictable. And that led to you know, governmental recommendations around the world. Every guideline around the world, whether we're looking at Canada, Australia, England, or any other you know, health-oriented um, society, including the United States, have said over and over, reduce saturated fat, reduce saturated fat. Because there actually have been more than 300 studies in metabolic wards that confirm this relationship. Eat more cheese, butter, and meats. You'll see your cholesterol go up. And if you wait 10 years, heart attack, stroke, aneurysms are a concern. So now we have some clarity that that was the true science, that was the true message. And it's never possible to get every study consistent in line, but with this high quality review, we know that the best data should guide you to eat from that beautiful rainbow colored plant you know, dish that we all recognize as the science. Definitely. And can you talk about some of the, the sources of misinformation, some of the kind of leading sources of corruption that have led to people being confused about saturated fat and thinking it's, it's really, really healthy? So we've gotten confused. You know, we've had you know, major magazines, Time Magazine, Butter is Back, New York Times, Butter is Healthy. Uh, and it reads like a spy novel. In late 2008 in Mexico City, the international dairy community got together and they struggled with the issue, the public's getting smart. They're buying soy milk instead of cow milk. What are we gonna do about this? They actually published these notes. This isn't speculation. They said, we're gonna find researchers and influencers that'll start praising dairy and high fat dairy and butter and cheese and such. That was 2008. 2010, a paper's published that challenges saturated fat and heart disease. The senior author is funded by the dairy industry. Nobody paid attention to that. The headlines were all over the world. Questions come up about many decades of research, maybe saturated fat isn't bad for you. Second paper gets published like that. These research papers were widely criticized. But once the news is out and once there's confusion, the media likes clickbait headlines that challenge the conventional norm. And then there's Time Magazine, and then there's Nina Teichel's The Big Fat Surprise. There's money in the dairy industry. There's money in the beef industry. Uh, there's the famous uh, beef checkoff program, where the government of the United States provides dollars promoting cheese and beef and pays for some of the advertising. A uh, research article just a couple weeks ago that suggested meat was an important component of the diet. You go to the very end of the study, you see that it was funded by the beef checkoff program that our government pays for. So that is the backstory, that there's been a concerted effort, you know, between the milk, got milk mustache campaign, between the idea that chocolate milk was good for athletes and you see signs in high school gyms so that children uh, get increasingly uh, focused on the idea that milk is necessary, when the real science hadn't changed. It was just a struggling industry striving to confuse the public like the tobacco industry did so well for decades. But ultimately, the real truth comes out. And 
this Cochrane database indicates that that was just a unfortunate and costly and costly in terms of lives kind of path that we took for a decade. But it's time to you know squash that and clarify for the public. I hope the headlines through plant-based news and other outlets will be as big and bold as the butter was back headline because that's what we need to catch you know, the community's imagination and attention. And if you had to pick one person who is kind of the most dangerous, who's kind of one person that's pushed this high fat, saturated fat is healthy narrative over the years, who would it be if you had to pick one person? You know, there's been a whole cast of characters that has led to this confusion for the past 10 years, but I would put the uh, head character as Nina Teichels because she had been researching a book for a number of years that came out in 2014, The Big Fat Surprise, encouraging people to eat meat and cheese and butter and ridiculed scientists who'd been working for decades on identifying a very sophisticated studies that saturated fat from animal products was an issue. She completely discounted all their research without doing any of her own. But because of her upbeat personality and a real concerted media effort, that book won awards year after year. It was praised in medical journals, a non-peer reviewed trade book praised by The Lancet out of London, one of the most esteemed you know, medical journals as a breakthrough book. Um, and it was so frustrated many of us. Uh, and she would be on TV shows and talk shows and would be standing in front of um, counters full of red meat and, you know, indicating this is where people should be eating. You know, and people rallied around her, Dr. Malhotra and Gary Tobbs and some of the luminaries that, you know, all of a sudden the message is getting out to hundreds of thousands of millions of people. Had that not happened, had that book, The Big Fat Surprise, not distorted the science, had it not won those awards, had she not been on the talk shows rallied around by other people with the ability to reach a lot of people, I think, you know, the one cover of Time magazine would have faded. But she sort of stoked the fire over and over, which is why the book, The Big Fat Surprise, the surprise is her science was never right. And the surprise is the science over the last five or six decades was spot on right from the 1950s, cut back, cut out meat, cheese, butter, pork, turkey, chicken, uh, and enjoy plants. And what do you think of uh, somebody that I think spearheading the movement in a little way, certainly in the UK, he's called Dr. Asim Malhotra. He's from London and uh, he's very, very well spoken. You debated him in 2016. Do you give any credibility to the ideas that, that he puts forward and what do you think of him? Yeah, Dr. Malhotra and I have very similar training. He trained as an interventional cardiologist in London. I did the same across the United States and in Detroit, Michigan. Uh, we both have a platform for health, but he chose to focus on the um, controversy of which there isn't, but the controversy that saturated fat butter, cheese and meats may actually be advantageous for your heart health completely in the face of decades of uh, good science. He did know science himself. And I think he did a lot of harm, a lot of damage. We debated four years ago. Um, he's very good in front of the camera. Uh, he has a, a great James Bond accent that plays well in the United States. Uh, he's well-spoken and educated. It's just the message is wrong. Uh, we happen by coincidence to both have been in a little town in Italy. It's called Piopi. It's a town of 300. It's only famous because that's where Dr. Ansel Keys, American researcher, lived every winter for 40 years. And there's a museum honoring the Mediterranean diet in Piopi. That's why I went there. It's a beautiful coastal town south of Naples. Uh, he went there for a week. I went there for a day. Uh, his book, claims that based on one week in a town of 300, he's got a program for everybody everywhere. And surprise, butter, cheese, eggs, meat, poultry, all should be added to your diet. It, you know, it, it couldn't be wrong, uh, more wrong. It couldn't be more distorted. It couldn't be more manipulated. Uh, no fan. Uh, this new review clearly uh, confirms that this was, you know, um, just black magic. It wasn't science. And I hope uh, that he'll pursue the message he has to reduce added sugar and processed foods in the diet. We all agree. Great platform. 
but stop encouraging people to add butter, meat, eggs, cheese, and poultry to their diet. 